Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna do two cost minimization problems that both involve having substitutes production technology. Okay, so suppose Bob's pretzel stand has the following production function, f of x1, x2 is equal to 2x1 plus x2, which is just telling us that the amount of output we're gonna get is gonna be two times the amount of factor one plus the amount of factor two. We'll assume the price of the first factor is 10, price of the second factor is two. We wanna know how much is it gonna to cost to produce 16 units of output? Right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the ratio of marginal products, that's our MRTS, and we wanna get our factor, our ratio of factor prices. So here, omega one divided by omega two. So I've got this down here. I don't wanna to scroll too far, <laughs> sorry. So MP1 is two, Y, that's just the derivative with respect to X1 mp2 is 1, that's just the derivative with respect to x2. Our input prices, well, we had 10 and 2, so the factor ratio is just, or the ratio of factor prices is just 5. So we're comparing an isoquant with a slope of 2 to isocost with a slope of 5. So what I'm saying here is we're going to look for the smallest isocost to cross the isoquant. Let me first draw the picture. I've actually kind of drawn the picture carefully. We have like factor 2, factor 1. And then I've drawn an isoquant with a slope of two, right? And if we use only input two, we will get 16 units of output, which is what we're desiring. And if we use only factor one, we'll use eight units of factor one and we'll still get 16 units of output. So I've actually kind of drawn this carefully. And then my isocosts are gonna, well, I drew those less carefully. We'll just say they have a slope of five. Staring at this for a second, we're like, wait a second, isocosts are steeper than the isoquant. This means that the smallest isocost is definitely gonna hit on the vertical axis. And so we are gonna use what? Only X2, this is like our alley solution. So we're gonna use 16 units of X2 to produce 16 units of output. What's this gonna cost? Well, the cost of this input bundle is gonna be two times 16, why? Because the price, the factor price was two, or 32 units. And then just for completeness, like why didn't we just use all X? Well, all right, if we use all X, we have to use eight units of X and to be able to get 16 units of, or all X. What, we'd have to use eight units of factor one to get 16 units of output. Uh, those eight units are gonna cost us 10 each. So that's a cost of 80. So uh, that's not good. Clearly the cost minimization is gonna happen with using only factor two and not using factor one, given these present, given this production technology and these input prices. Okay, well, there's something else that can happen depending on having different, the way that, you know, there's three ways that these slopes of isoquants and isocosts can match up. It can be that the isocosts are steeper. It could be that the isocosts have the same slope, in which case the smallest isocost is gonna be coincident with the isoquant or the isocost could be flatter. So let's see that situation. Suppose Bob's pretzel stand has the following production function, 4x1 plus 5x2. Given the price of the first factor is two and the price of the second factor is three, how much will it cost to produce 20 units of output? Okay, well, kind of gave away the store by telling you we have these three pictures. We're now gonna see the other things. You, yeah, you're right, we're gonna get an all x solution. Let's see why though. So we'll get our marginal rate of technical substitution. So MP1 divided by MP2, that's gonna be partial here divided by the partial here. So four fifths versus omega one over omega two is two thirds, right? Uh, here the isocost is gonna be flatter than the isoquant, right? Two thirds is gonna be a, is a smaller number than four fifths. This is 0.66, this is 0.8. So the isocost is flatter. With flatter isocost, I didn't draw this very carefully, but who cares because we know that we'll just back out what this bundle has to be. So flatter isocost, steeper isoquants means that our solution is gonna be down here. It's all X. So we're gonna use only X1. In order to produce 20 units of output using only X1, we are gonna need, what, five units of X1, right? Because our production, so 20 equals four X1. To get those 20 units, we need, we need to use uh, five units of X1. Got it. What's that gonna cost? Well, five times its price, which was two, so that's gonna cost 10. And then just for completeness, what happens if we would make a mistake and we'd use factor two, you'd use all two here. 
Well, to do that, we would need, uh, what, four units? Yep, 20 is equal to 5x2. So we need four units of factor two. That's gonna cost us three units each. Three times four is 12, that's more. So we've minimized cost by using five units of factor one to produce our 20 units of output according to the following production technology where those five units each cost two. Okay, cool. So um, if this was class, I would tell you the origins of the Bob's pretzel example because I find it helps to kind of break up class with some stories because students pay way more attention like after the story. And I know it can be just like boring to just sit through even the best of uh, best of classes. So the story that I would tell was this where this class was my experience working on a pretzel stand at Bay Beach Amusement Park in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I have to I have to sit at this stupid pretzel stand and it was uh, you make these pretzels, these big fluffy pretzels. You dunk them in water, then put salt on them, then sit out all day and hope that somebody would come by. And it turned out like people didn't come to the amusement park looking for pretzels. They wanted things like ice cream and cotton candy. So uh, the pretzel cart didn't work very long and pretty soon they kind of replaced it with other things. Later on, I think, years later, I think they actually made it work a little bit better. I don't know if they had better tasting pretzels or what they did. Um, here's my picture of me working at the amusement park, not on the pretzel cart, but instead on the Ferris wheel. So that was fun. This guy made jokes about me possibly being a politician. So I wasn't quite sure how I'd take it at the time, <laughs> nor now thinking back, but it kind of makes me laugh thinking about him asking if I was a politician. So anyway, um, go ahead and conclude here.